In 1856, three years after the establishment of the Taiping Heavenly Kingdom, Hong Xiaochuan, Supreme Heavenly King, had enforced many new social policies. Women in the kingdom were equal to men, which drastically reduced female infanticide that was quite prevalent in the Qing Empire. They were also allowed to partake the imperial service examination, otherwise reserved to men. Foot binding was banned. Women could serve in the Taiping army or even become officers. They were directly commanded by Hong Xuanjia, who was trained in the martial arts, the sister of Hong Xiaochuan, and wife of Wei Changhui, the North King. Augustus Lindley, a British adventurer and military man who was in Nanjing to train the Taiping soldiers, commented on how progressive the Taiping society was towards women. Hong Xiaochuan even wrote a letter to the United States President, Franklin Pierce, to congratulate the equality men and women shared in the American society. Other typing policies, however, were more restrictive. Men and women had to live separately, and adultery or prostitution were punished by death. Meanwhile, the Qing authorities prepared a counter-attack. The Imperial Army attempted to recapture Nanjing in a four-month battle that began in May 1856. The Taipings held up firmly and defeated the Qing, who retreated north. However, internal conflicts gradually arose. Yang Xiaoqing, the East King, started to have delusions of grandeur. He did not hesitate to harshly punish those who offended him, and even had Wei Changhui, the North King, and Qing Hurgang flogged. He was therefore both feared and hated by many in the Taiping. Yang Xiaoqing constantly requested new titles from Hong Xiaochuan to confirm his control. He had Wei Changhui, Qing Hurgang, and Shi Da Kai, the Flank King and the cunning general dispatched to other provinces. The heavenly king, realizing the situation and his eyes of treason of Yang Xiaoqing, immediately ordered the three generals to come back. Qing Gang arrived first, followed by Wei Changhui. They agreed not to wait for the flank king's return and took action. In September 1856, they invaded Yang's palace during the night and massacred him and his family. However, a few thousand soldiers hidden within the army still remained loyal to Yang. In a cunning idea, the Taiping leaders agreed to invite all of Yang's followers to a public punishment of Wei and Qin. This was of course a ruse, and the men that came were executed. On October 1856, Shi Da Kai, the flank king, finally arrived. When he discovered the news, he denounced the excessive violence, accusing Wei Changhui. In response, Wei accused Shi Da Kai of being a traitor. Losing face, the flank king realized these accusations shredded his influence and decided to escape Nanjing immediately. The same night, his family and followers were slain, similarly to Yang's. Shi Da Kai, in exile, assembled a hundred thousand men and marched towards Nanjing, demanding the heads of Wei Changhui and Qing Ri Gang be brought to him. Wei dispatched Qin to stop the approaching army and plotted to capture and overthrow the supreme heavenly king. Hong Xiaochuan, however, had developed a dense network of spies and was informed of this. Hong ordered his bodyguards to execute Wei, and Qing was called back and killed too. Due to these events, the popularity of Hong and his remaining generals plummeted. The army's morale was also very low. Shi Da Kai became on the contrary quite popular. To regain him and his men, the Heavenly King appointed the flanking supreme commander of the Taiping army. The delegates of the Taiping Heavenly Kingdom realized the situation was unstable and tried to gain the aid of Europeans and wealthy Chinese people without any success. The former were too busy for the Taipings, mainly because they had engaged in the Second Opium War fighting the Qing Empire, but they would later be forced to join the conflict against the Taiping. The latter preferred to stay uninvolved. Nonetheless, the Heavenly Kingdom's army won more battles against the overrun Qing. In August 1858, Chen Yucheng, a Taiping general nicknamed the Four-Eyed Dog, captured the town of Luzhou. The imperial governor, in response, ordered Li Xubin, commander of the Xiang army that had been specially raised to fight the rebellion, to counterattack. Leading 10,000 men armed with rifles, Li Xubin 
was able to achieve small victories against the Taipings. In November 1858, the Battle of Sanche took place. The reinforcements of 15,000 men that the Xiang army awaited were late. Furthermore, troops from the Nian Rebellion, another rebellion in the same area, aided the Taipings by sending 40,000 men. The rebels easily crushed the Xiang army and killed Li Xubin. They later recaptured the lost territories. The Taiping still held on. In 1859, Hong Rengan, the Heavenly King's cousin, and one of his first converts with whom he had studied from the American missionary, Isaac R. Jacox Roberts, came back into the picture. Shortly after the beginning of the rebellion, he had gone to Hong Kong to study Christianity and many other subjects with European missionaries. The Taiping leader called him back to Nanjing to help him administer the kingdom, and he was given strong power. Hong Rengan had a military ambitious spirit. In early 1860, 180,000 Qing imperial soldiers, led by the chief commander Zhang Guoliang, a next gang member, marched towards Nanjing to attempt to crush the rebellion. Rangan ordered the Four Eyed Dog to deploy more than 100,000 men alongside the nearby river. Other Taiping leaders commanded 260,000 troops. When the moment was optimal, Chen Yicheng attacked. The Taipings fought for weeks and crushed the Imperial forces, killing both the Imperial Chief Commander Zhang Guoliang and Imperial Chief Commissioner He Chun. The Qing had to completely reorganize their army. Zheng Guofan, a promising commander, was promoted to general. This would change the course of the war. In early 1861, Li Xiaocheng, another Taiping general, decided to capture the city of Shanghai leading 600,000 men. Hong Rengan was opposed to this decision, especially due to the presence of Western nations in the town. Li Xiaocheng did, however, get the promise from the British and the French not to get involved. The battle began in July. The Qing authorities held on and reinforcements arrived regularly from Beijing and other towns. Zheng Guofan told his student Li Hongzhang to bring some of the Xiang army back to Anhui province to train and reorganize an independent force under Li Hongzhan's command, which would later become the Anhui army. In the weeks that followed, an American-born military commander named Frederick Townsend Ward, who had assembled a force of Western mercenaries and Chinese troops to fight piracy, the Shanghai Foreign Corps, started to defend the city too. The British and the French withdrew their promise when Western inhabitants asked for the Taiping threat to be removed. Sir James Hope of the Royal Navy commanded 3,000 men, and Auguste Leopold Protet, a French admiral and founder of the town of Dakar in Senegal, also defended Shanghai with his 4,000 troops. He was, however, killed during the conflict. Frederick Townsend Ward's corps was reformed due to poor discipline of the Western mercenaries Great numbers of Chinese soldiers were enlisted until the corps became the ever victorious army that had been co founded with a French officer. At the Battle of Cerci in September 1862, Ward was hit and killed by a musket shot. More and more different armies started to stack up against the Taiping. They faced a newly commanded, ever victorious army, now led by the British Major General Charles George Gordon, or Chinese Gordon. They also faced the Royal Navy and French Infantry de Marine, the Qing Imperial Forces composed of the Anhui Army, led by Li Hongzhang, and the Green Standard Army, led by Huang Yisheng. In November 1862, Hong Xiaochuan ordered the offensive to be stopped, and the Taiping Army withdrew, ending the battle. In the months that followed, the Taipings lost more and more land and towns. In November 1863, the ever-victorious army recaptured the strategic town of Suzhou. The next month, the Taiping general, Li Xiaocheng, retreated to Nanjing and told Hong Xiaochuan to leave the Taiping capital immediately. The Heavenly King refused and took command of all of the Taiping army. He declared that anyone who disobeyed him and God would be immediately executed. However, the combined effect of restrictive measures and the stress of the approaching Qing forces eventually led to 200,000 Taiping troops fleeing out of Nanjing and surrendering to the Imperial Chinese army. Many others just abandoned their arms and fled to the countryside. In early 1864, Zheng Guofan had planned out the siege of Nanjing. The Taiping capital was besieged as from the 14th of March. 
The battle lasted for four months, and the food shortages soon affected the Taipings. The Heavenly King ate weeds that grew around his palace, stating that they were holy food. Ironically, he poisoned himself, and died on the 1st of June 1864. He was buried in yellow silk. His 14-year-old son, Hong Tian Guifu, was coronated five days later. His reign was short, and in the last days of the siege, he escaped with the help of Hong Rengan and a few other Taipings. Most important Taiping generals were unable to escape and executed. Li Xiaocheng had fled too, but he was tracked by 700 cavalrymen, found and executed. One Taiping general, Lai Wenguang, managed to escape and joined the Nian Rebellion. Overall, the Qing easily captured Nanjing. The battle ended in July and had also been a testing ground for the first modern Chinese firearms. Hong Tian Guifu and Hong Rengan were eventually discovered in November and executed. Although some isolated Taiping troops remained in several provinces and continued to fight up to 1871, the Taiping Heavenly Kingdom was over. Approximately 30 million men and women died due to this conflict, including many important officers both from China and Western countries. The Taiping Rebellion certainly was the deadliest rebellion in world history, and it forever marked the Qing Dynasty. Thank you for watching this video. If you enjoyed it, please like it and subscribe to the channel. Should you have any questions relating to the topic, feel free to ask them in the comment section below.